Welcome back to Glenn's Hot Rod Garage. Today, we're introducing a new project. It's called Mid-Evening Maverick. It's my buddy's 76 Maverick from work, and uh, I got roped into this project kind of a little bit of the ways through it, and uh, we're going to finish it up and get it painted, and we're going to bring all that to you. So when I got to the project, this is pretty much what it looked like. Brian and his dad shaved off the uh, drip rail moldings, patched the rust, got a new fender. It was sanded down to 240 grit or something like that. So I came back through and sanded it all down with 80 grit. In uh, doing that, it gave me the opportunity to find defects in the car. There are some holes. I don't know if they're from an old vinyl top or what. And uh, this is a factory lead seam. If you put regular body filler over that, you're running into potential that the filler could pop off later. So uh, Brian's a fabricator by trade and um, we're going to do some horse trading to get my chassis work done on my car. Um, as you can see down in this corner, there's a metal patch put in. We got the uh, uh, drip rail molding shaved. There was some welding there all the way down the front. All that stuff's gone. Got another seam. What you want to do is put uh, Duraglass over this and then regular body filler because... It uh, seals out the acids in the lead that could cause the body filler to react. He was going to leave the moldings on, and I told him that wasn't a good idea, so we took him off, and now he's helping me clean clean this stuff out. If you can see, I already ground this out. There's a little bit of rust there. That needs to be treated, or it will come back in your paint job later. It's got a nice little HO50 with uh, trick flow heads and a little cam and a demon carburetor. Should run pretty good. Aluminum radiator, electric fan, just a street cruiser, but probably run 12s and a quarter or so. Maybe 1180s if it hooks up and all that good stuff. Here's the other factory lead seam. You can see it right through there. I'm gonna go over that with dirt glass and uh, then filler and blend it in. It's a little hole we found. I don't know what this hole's from. It could be a bullet hole or who knows, but uh, we gotta figure out what to do with that. There's some little rust holes that need to be filled still. Now, any of you old school guys, I've never seen this blue, I don't know if it's a sealer or a primer. This thing's had a paint job done on it sometime in the past. And uh, if you know what that is, leave it down in the comments. I'd really like to know. I like finding about old materials. I know this uh, red primer is ADS from DuPont. Because that was still in use when I first started doing bodywork and paint. Probably 40 years ago. Yeah, I'm that old. This fender was replaced before and painted the same color as the car. I got to it and that was one of the first things I did. Uh, the original paint wasn't feathered out and I just took my fingernail and it scratched right off. So... I sanded it all down. This is this is why um, this is why you want to use a, a car from bare metal to do a nice paint job on because you don't know what's hiding underneath. But uh, I pretty much found all the spots that I can tell, and uh, probably go over it one more time, and we'll go from there. So our plan here is to um, get the whole car down to 80 grit 
and then epoxy prime it, and then use a, a polyester surfacer over the whole car. Since we're not stripping it down to mar bare metal, we're going to need to have uh, some product to work with here. And after that, we'll start blocking and going over the body work and getting the body where it needs to be. All right, that's going to do it. Just a brief overview of this project, and we'll catch you next time on Glenn's Hot Rod Garage. Peace.